York City and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. I see you received my complaint. I got it, Mingo. Where's Stanley? Where do you think? Upstairs. Brandy? Naturally. She always does mother him when he's in trouble. <laughs> be careful, Marshal. He might be dangerous. <laughs> well, Marshal, you got a sweet word for Dixie? Yeah. Move. Oh, it's not very sweet. It was to the point. <laughs> Say hello to Jim for me, huh? Go away. It's me, Brandy. Matt. Come in, Matt. Join me in a drink? Where is he, Brandy? In the next room. Cried himself to sleep. Save it, Brandy. I gotta take him. Oh, why, Matt? Jim Stanley never did a mean thing in his life. He's no bad man. He stole money from Mingo's roulette table and he threw a bottle at him when he was caught. Mingo's present charges. Stanley can clear himself in court. Huh? Against Mingo's witnesses? Do you bring Stanley out or do I go get him? Go get him. But I wouldn't be proud, Matt. Stick to running dance hall, girls, Brandy. Let me run the law, huh? Stanley? Stanley! Hmm? Hmm? Oh. It's you, Marshal. I was sleeping. I want you to come with me, Jim. Come with you? Sure, Marshal. You better get up. Come on. Mm. Come on. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, where are we going, Marshal? Would you like to visit my ranch? I got a new colt. The prettiest little sorrel you ever Jim. saw. She... Well, we're going to jail. Jail? Me, Marshal? Do I have to? Yes, Jim. I've never been in a jail. I'm sorry, Jim. No. No. I, I can't go in there. Oh, Marshal, I ain't never been locked up before. Please don't make me... I have to. I didn't mean to do it. Honest, I just lost my head when I realized my money was gone. I wouldn't have kept those chips. I know that. I, I just grabbed them. I don't know why... They were there, and I just grabbed them, and then Mingo started in on me. He kept saying things, bad things about... Take it them. easy, Jim. I wouldn't have cared, except that, well, Dixie was there. He kept yelling at me that I was a thief right right in front of her. I tried to make him stop, and he wouldn't. And then something happened. The, the bottle was there, You and... threw it at Mingo? No, no. I just threw it, Marshal. I was crazy. I, I didn't mean to hurt nobody. I believe you, Jim. Marshal, uh, will you ask Dixie to come and see me later? 
Yeah, sure, I'll ask her. Thanks. I just want to tell her not to blame Mingo for all this. She might say something or give up her job. Don't worry, Jim. I don't think Dixie's going to give up anything. Dylan, he just sits there staring. Yeah, poor devil. He won't really be convicted, will he? Well, I hope not, Chester. Mingo's the one who ought to be in jail. Look, Chester, this isn't exactly my idea of justice either. A shady gambler against a simple-minded horse rancher. Hello, Marshal. Goodbye, Chester. Hmm? Oh, goodbye. I'll run along. You stay run. put, Chester. Oh, now, Marshal... I wanted to be alone with you. I sent for you to come and visit Jim Stanley, and you better be nice to him. <laughs> Most fellas are tickled pink if I like them. They say I'm pretty. You're pretty enough. Hmm, that's, that's better. I knew you liked me. I said you were pretty. I didn't say I liked you. Oh, now that's nasty. Would you like to hear what I really think of you? No, don't bother. I get the idea. You're Mingo's girl. When I feel like it. And why do you have to tease a man like Stanley, drive him to drinking and gambling and trouble like he's in now? He's sweet. He thinks I'm beautiful. Yeah. But even men like him wake up. Stick to Mingo. <laughs> drop in and see if your prisoner was all set for trial tomorrow. Mingo, I want you to withdraw those charges. And let that potential murderer go free? <laughs> no. You got back the chip Stanley took from your table, and his assaulting a man like you is ridiculous. He doesn't even wear a gun. A bottle constitutes a deadly weapon. Look it up. Mark. Why are you doing this, Mingo? Why pick on a man like Stanley? Let's say I don't like him always slobbering over Dixie. She's private property. For that greedy little vixen you'd send Stanley to prison, knowing that it'll probably crack his mind completely? That's his problem. You don't understand, Mingo. I don't like to see people pushed around. Well, don't cross me, Marshal. I already have. People get dead that way. Yeah, so I've heard. Now, just who are these witnesses of yours against Stanley? Ned Cole, Saginaw Henry. Both on your payroll. Dixie. Some of the other girls. All working for you, huh? Jim Stanley's as good as convicted, Marshal. There's not a thing you can do about it. Here, man. Drink this. Ah, uh, thanks, Brandy. <clears throat> you know, all you need to do is stop fighting yourself, Matt. You're mixed up. Yeah, that's sure true, Brandy. You know, it's funny when, when it's something you can fight with your fists and your guns, it's easy. But how do you fight a deal like this? You gotta clear Jim somehow. Yeah, with those witnesses against him, Jim can't win in court. Technically, he's a criminal. Oh, criminal, my foot. He admits the crimes. The judge will have to sentence him to at least a minimum jail term. We know there are witnesses who can prove he's innocent. Now, a smart man would find a way to make him talk. I've been thinking about it. Well, I, I, I'll tell Jim you were asking after him, huh? I think he'd like that. Mm, he's Dixie's. Hm. I had me a man once, Matt. I traded him for a bottle of brandy. <laughs> I paid a stiff price for my name. You're not through yet, Brandy. Oh, sure. <laughs> I play mother to everybody. 
Take everybody's troubles on my shoulders. Help salve my conscience. <laughs> Don't ever hurt a person, Matt. You never get through paying for it. Well, I, I better be going. Where? To try to get some of those witnesses to talk. Hello, Saginaw. Huh? Oh, it's you. I've been looking for you. Then you've been looking for trouble. Well, you're beginning to sound like your boss, Mingo. It's late. What do you want? I want to read you something from this book. What book? This law book. Oh, so? First law I see says that uh, anyone giving a drink to an Indian is liable to fine up to $500. I saw you buy an Indian Pete a drink only last week. Pete's a stable boy. He ain't no savage. Law doesn't say savage. Says Indian. Pete's an Indian. So technically, you broke the law. You can't make Next any... Next one says any man that disrobes in a public place is guilty of committing a public nuisance. Carries a fine of $100. Look, what the devil is all this? I saw you breaking a horse down in Harrison's Corral a little while back. You took your shirt off, and that's disrobing in a public place. Technically. You can't get away with this, Dylan. How much you make a month, Saginaw? Fifty, seventy-five. Uh-huh. Well, the way it looks, I can get you fined on enough of these laws to keep you broke for about five years. Five years? Then we can start all over again. You're, you're bluffing. I never even heard of these well, laws. Well, look for you... yourself here. If you witnesses are going to send Jim Stanley to jail on a technicality, then a lot of you are going to jail the same way. Well, laws may be there, but they ain't fair. All right, Saginaw, if that's how you want it. Come on, let's go to jail. No. No, uh, wait. Well, then start talking. Well, Dixie shilled Stanley into losing his money, and, and me and Ned Cole egged him into grabbing a couple of chips when the wheelman wasn't looking. On Mingo's orders? Sure. Stanley looked down at the chips we swiped, and uh, he reached out to hand them back when Mingo jumped him. What was Dixie doing? I'm trying to keep from laughing. Yeah, I'll bet. And then what? Mingo rode Stanley hard to make him break down in front of Dixie. And finally, the poor lunkhead seemed to go crazy. He yelled and tossed a bottle at the bar. Not at Mingo? No, missed him by ten feet. Stanley was just working off his mad by busting the bottle. Paid for it, I guess he had the right. Yeah, I guess he had First, I think Mingo was just deviling Stanley, and then he got the idea to press charges and send him to jail. We got orders out to testify. Uh-huh. Well, thanks, Saginaw. Uh, Marshal, uh, I'd like you to know something. Yeah? I'm glad I told you about Stanley, because framing him into prison isn't my idea of something to be proud of. It shouldn't be. <laughs> Good evening, Chester. My, what are you so happy about, Mr. Dillon? <laughs> everything, Chester, everything. Is it about Jim Stanley? It is about Jim Stanley. He's going to clear himself in court tomorrow. Come on, let's go tell him. Well, gracious, that is good news. He couldn't have taken much more of being locked up. <laughs> I know. Hey, Jim, wake up. We're going to break... Jim. Mr. Dillon, he's, he's gone. Both window bars are cut. Yeah. And here's what cut him. A hacksaw blade. And looky on there's another. Oh, that fool. Why couldn't he have waited one more day and he'd have been free? Jim Stanley didn't have those hacksaw blades on him, Mr. Dillon. I know I searched him good. You searched Dixie good? Hmm? Oh, mercy, no, Mr. Dillon. She's a girl. He didn't have any other visitors. No, sir. Mingo's going to be awful mad when he finds out his girl helped Jim Stanley get away. Come on. You going to arrest Dixie, Mr. Dillon? I don't know, Chester. First, I gotta find her.
We will return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, every Sunday on CBS Radio, hear both sides debate the issues on Pick the Winner. It's a program that brings in the top people from Democratic and Republican camps, standing their ground and delivering their views on the biggest questions of the campaign. Don't miss Pick the Winner, Sundays between now and November, to be fully informed when it comes time to vote. And remember, straight through election time, make CBS Radio your election headquarters. Now, the second act of Gunsmoke. aren't you, Marshal? Where's Dixie, Mingo? Dixie, she's gone. I don't know where she is. You're lying. No, oh, I swear she disappeared hours ago. I still think you're lying. Dixie's here someplace. No, he's telling me the truth for once, man. Dixie's gone, all right. Are you sure, Brandy? Saw her right out of town. Was Stanley? Yeah, Matt. The two of them. Dixie and Stanley? Dixie passed him some saw blades. He cut his way out. That rotten double cross in hell cat. She's your girl, Mingo. I'll be the laughing stock of Dart City. Good. I hope they laugh you clear out of Kansas. <laughs> if it's the last thing I'll do, I'll find her. Both of them. Finding them is my job, Mingo. Go ahead. But you better beat me to them, or you'll be arresting them dead. <laughs> They stopped here, all right. Probably changed horses and got some supplies. That wasn't why Stanley came home. Look, Chester. What? Water in the stock trough is right up to the top. And the barn's open. Feed pulled out where the stock can reach it. Even scared to death, Jim thought about his animals first. Mr. Dillon, you think Mingo's trailing Stanley and Dixie, too? Uh, perhaps. It's one good reason why we'd better catch him quick. Come on. No. Still no sign. Uh, it looks like we've lost them for good now. What do we do? Go back, Mr. Dillon? Well, we can't let Mingo find them. Sure, but the way they've been zigzagging back and forth for the last four days, we don't have a chance in a thousand. I'm not so sure, Chester. Hmm? You know, there's a certain pattern about the way Stanley and Dixie have been moving. I don't think they're trying to leave this section at all. Yeah, we have been getting closer and closer to Dodge with every circle lately. And not only to Dodge. Mr. Dillon, you got an idea? Yeah, maybe. Come on, we'll ride back to Stanley's ranch. You think they came back here? I will soon find out. But from what we saw here before, I'll bet Stanley's not the kind to stay away from his ranch for very long. What? I'm hit the dirt, Captain. Behind the trough. Yeah. It's Jim Stanley. There's his horse. Yeah. All right, keep your eyes open. Stanley! Jim, it's Matt Dillon. Let me talk to you. You go away, Marshal. I don't want to hurt you, but I ain't going back to that jail. Now you go away now. I'll kill you. Jim, listen to me. I've got a witness. You better leave quick now. Please, Marshal. Mr. Dillon, I'm getting wet. It's better than getting shot. Keep your head down. Yes, sir. Sure he is wet. Stanley's in a good position. Closest cover for us is the barn. That's across 50 yards of clearing. That's a long run. 
He could pick us off before we made ten feet. Jim, I'm not leaving until I've talked to you. Leave me alone, Marshal. Can't you leave me alone? I'm coming to talk to you, Jim. No. No, stay back. I warn you. Mr. Dillon, don't do it. That's a crazy man. That's a frightened man, Chester. I'm coming unarmed, Jim. I don't think you're a murderer, but if you are, this is your chance. Good luck, Mr. Dillon. <gasps> Mr. Dillon! Stanley's shot sliced across my side like a branding iron. It was all I could do to ignore my fear and keep going. But somehow I reached the ranch house alive. And I opened the door. <laughs> Jim Stanley stood there holding his gun. Jim. I, I, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I, I was only trying to scare you. I'm not a killer. I, I never shot anybody in my life. Honest, Marshal, I, I can't even shoot a rabbit. I know that, Jim. I, I'm afraid... I've always been afraid of things. I try like to be like other people, and it only seems to bring trouble. You can stop being afraid of the law and jail right now. That's all over with. You, you mean that, Marshal? Really? Really. But, but I shot you. Did you? No, I don't recall. Oh, but Mr. Dillon, shot hit your side right, right there. You see it? It's bleeding. Now, Jim, listen to me. You didn't shoot me. Oh. Well, all right, if, if you say so, Mr. Dillon. I say so. Here, I'll take that rifle. Now, let's go back to town and get this business settled, huh? You've been good to me, Marshal. Forget it, Jim. There is one thing, though. Dixie. Oh, she brought me hacksaw blades. I know that. She said you were going to hang me and that, that I had to escape. She kept saying uh -huh. it. Oh. She was riding with you. Well, where is she now? Oh, she left me last night. I was glad. I was nearly wild listening to her talk about you and prison. <laughs> even swore I'd kill myself before I'd go back to jail. I'm glad you didn't mean it. Oh, I meant it at the time. Oh, I was sure scared. <laughs> you feel better now? Oh, yeah. Yes, I know. Everything's just going to be fine. Ah, ah, ah. Ah. The rifle slug splashed the side of Jim's face with red, and he crumpled into the dirt. From the water trough, Chester opened up and drew the fire of whoever was hiding in the hayloft of the barn. I could see a gun barrel poking out from the side of the hayloft. And I picked up Stanley's rifle. Mingo. Mr. Dillon, are you all right? Yeah, Chester. But Mingo's dead. Well, how about Jim Stanley, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, he was scared more than hurt. He should come to any minute. Well, my goodness... Oh, this looks like a sure enough war's been happening around here. Where have you been, Dixie? Oh, sure now, Marshal. A, a girl's got a right to look after her uh, investments. Uh, my Mingo and Stanley both dead. Well, now that's a real shame. Hmm? Oh, but Jim Stanley... Uh, gonna Chester. A... You said investments. The only investment you've made is prison time for helping Jim escape. Me? Well, how are you going to prove anything, Marshal? With Jim dead. But he's... Your Chester, only... why don't you go look after the horses? But Mr. Dillon... Yes, sir? It's a right good thing because I'm going to be terribly busy, you know, taking care of poor Jim's ranch and money and 
And, of course, the funeral and everything. Why should all that concern you, Dixie? Because I'm Jim Stanley's widow. What? I married him three days ago in this city. It was such a sweet wedding. Yeah, I'm sure it was. And now all I have left are some memories. And, of course, this little old ranch and Jim's money. Dixie, there's something you should know. Hmm? You also got a husband. Have you heard enough, Jim? Enough. Jim! When I saw you fall... Sure. Sure bad, Dixie. Oh, Jim, you you mustn't pay no mind to what I said. I, I was upset. Didn't I come back just to be with you? No good, Dixie. Jim's on to you now. Jim, are you going to let him talk to me like that? He's my friend. And I don't like you now, Dixie. Oh, that's too bad. I'm still your wife. Marshal, can she make that stick? Well, by law, you have to support her, Jim. Of course, I don't say how. Marshal, you stop putting ideas in... And, of course, she has to take care of your house for you, Jim. Clean it, do the chores, cook for you. Cook? Me? Cook for him? He can make you, Dixie. It's his right. (laughs) Oh, right or not, I'd like to see him try. He can do it, Dixie. Yeah? Well, they can't if I'm not here. And I'm leaving right now. You want to ride into town with us, Jim? No. I think I'd rather stay here for a while, Marshal. If it's all right. Yeah, sure, sure. I'll fix it. But in a few days, when you feel like it, come in and see me and we'll help you get that divorce taken care of. Divorce? On grounds of desertion. She just deserted you, remember? Chester and I are your witnesses. Oh. Well, thanks, Marshal. I sure do thank you. So long, Jim. Goodbye, Marshal. Bye. Come on, Chester, let's go. Uh, he's had it too rough out here on the frontier, hasn't he, Mr. Dillon? Uh, Jim Stanley, I mean... It's addled him, sort of. Yeah, I, I guess that's it, just. <clears throat> Men like him need looking after. Yeah, we got all kinds out here, Chester. Come on, let's get back to town. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Herb Purdom, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were John Daner and Michael Ann Barrett, with Paul Dubov, Vivi Janice, and Bill Lally. Parley Bear is Chester. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Tomorrow's speakers on Pick the Winner, representing both the major parties, will be Harold Stassen, Republican, and George Ball, Democrat. Listen for this important program, Pick the Winner, tomorrow and every Sunday from now to November. This is Roy Rowan speaking, and this is the CBS Radio Network. (laughs) 